Welcome to CoreCon today for May 26, 2023. It's the Friday before Memorial Day weekend. I hope you are all um, having a fantastic week, whether you're going to be working, having fun, wherever it is this weekend. But just remember, because it's Memorial Day on Monday, no Core Cutting Today video will be back on Tuesday, but I do have a special video for this weekend. So check out the YouTube channel this weekend for another special video. With that said, we have a lot to talk about today, including Amazon wants to become your home wire or your wireless phone provider, not home internet. They want to do that too. Uh, YouTube TV is having DVR issues. Max isn't quite have all the Discovery Plus content. Those stories and a whole lot more will break down everything you need to know about them in this video. If you want to learn more about these stories, get into them a little bit more in depth, check out the show notes down below and in the first pinned comment. I'll put a link to each story I talk about here so you can read them for yourself and come up with your own opinions. I'll love to hear from you. If you're new here, do me a big favor or you've been here a while, hit that subscribe button or hit that thumbs up. Do one or both lets YouTube know you enjoy what we do here. So YouTube recommends our videos to more people, helping us grow, helping us support our families. We would really appreciate it. Hopefully we can help you break free from the high cost of cable TV. So let's dive into it. Starting off with Amazon wants to now offer wireless phone plans. Now, Amazon's been in phone service for a while. About eight, nine years ago, they had um, a phone. It was a, called the Fire Phone. It was their own OS. It was a smartphone meant to take on the iPhone and Android. It didn't last too long. Now, according to the Wall Street Journal, they're in advanced talks with Dish, who, thanks to their purchase of Boost Mobile, is now the fourth largest provider of wireless phone services in the United States with a little over 8 million subscribers to their plans. And Amazon are talking about having Amazon sell basically boost mobile plans, but branded as Amazon plans. It probably was some type of special bundle if you're an Amazon Prime customer, and you'd be able to buy your phone service from Amazon, have them manage your phone service through Amazon right there with that. Details are still thin. Uh, Dish basically said, at this time, we do not have a deal. Reportedly, though, according to the Wall Street Journal, people familiar with the negotiations say an announcement of this joint venture could come as soon as next month in June 2023. We'll see when they actually start selling the plans. But it's very clear that Amazon wants to expand its business model into more areas. They have the home internet that they're rapidly building up and testing. And now they're saying, hey, we want to be able to sell you home or wireless phone service with that also. Now, pricing and all that be interesting. Currently, Dish um, has some of the um, networks on their own network. They also uh, buy uh, Spectrum from AT&T and T-Mobile to kind of run the service, but they're building out their own network and intend to be 100% independent from T-Mobile and AT&T at some point in the near future that allow their planes to completely run off of their cell towers and more. We'll see how this all plans out for now. Let me know, would you get your phone service from Amazon if it gave you a good deal, especially if you're an Amazon Prime customer? I'd love to hear from you. All right, if you're a YouTube TV customer, you may have noticed some DVR recordings aren't appearing or they're very delayed, or instead of the DVR recording, you're getting the video on demand version with unskippable ads. It seems that YouTube TV's DVR is struggling processing um, the DVR recordings, which is causing a delay. A YouTube TV engineer posted on Reddit um, replying to us saying, we try to comment on all these threads, but the answer is the same. We're catching up on processing a large backlog of DVRs from last week and hope to be done soon. But in the meantime, you may have some, um, it, some issues with DVRs being immediately available. And you can always watch the video on demand version in the interim until they catch up, but uh, we are not putting uh, forced ads on DVR. A lot of people are upset because they go in the DVR, you can fast forward through commercials. On video on demand content, commercials are unskippable with that. So they say that's not intentional. They're struggling with some DVR issues of processing a huge number of DVR recordings, probably suffering some growing pains as they're one of the few um, live TV services that are adding customers right now. We'll keep a close eye on this, but if you are struggling to be able to access your DVR recordings, let it be known you are not alone. YouTube TV is aware of it and they are working on a fix with that. All right, Max launched this week, the newly rebranded version of HBO Max. It added a ton of discovery content um, from Discovery Plus and other services. Now, one of the questions a lot of people have been asking me is, how much uh, content is there? Is it all the Discovery Plus content or not? Do they need to keep their Discovery Plus subscription? Well, after digging into it, talking to some sources, it looks like about 80% of Discovery Plus content moved over to Max. 
including their most popular shows. Now, not everything has moved over to Max, but a good chunk of it. Uh, Warner Brothers Discovery also announced when they were talking about the launch of this service that some programming that was originally scheduled to be a Discovery Plus original is now becoming a Max original, which has come to Max. So for now, sadly, not all the content is available on Max that is from Discovery Plus, but the vast majority of it is, and they say the most popular content from Discovery Plus is also. Are you a Discovery Plus content customer? Have you tested out Max? How happy are you with the size of the catalog and the content there? Leave me a comment. Let me know if you are. I'll love to hear from you. All right, AT&T wants to block Starlink and T-Mobile satellite phone service. Now, well, recently, um, T-Mobile and Starlink from SpaceX announced a partnership that would, with their second-gen satellites that they're now launching, allow T-Mobile customers to start with text messages, eventually phone and voice uh, or data calls and more from satellite, which is really great. Basically, if there's a natural disaster, you will still be able to use your phone thanks to satellites. If you're in a very rural area where you may not have had service in the past, you will be able to. Great for hikers, for example, if they find themselves in a um, in trouble, they can at least text for help or call for help. at and working on a similar service from a different competitor out there. But AT&T has filed a uh, FCC filing to ask uh, the FCC not to permit SpaceX proposal use of T-Mobile's um, terrestrial spectrum to be able to broadcast on that. Now, this will prevent T-Mobile from offering the service to current phones. Under the proposed plan, basically, your current phone will automatically connect to these um, satellites and be able to work. at and is fighting that effort there. Uh, we'll see how this all plays out. DISH also tried to stop um, the Starlink from using a certain spectrum. The FCC recently sided with Starlink on that. It'll be interesting to see how this plays out. I would find it unlikely that they would um, side with at and but I've been surprised before. We'll see. Valley Sports is in bankruptcy, and it looks like they're doing some cost-cutting measures, cutting costs as best they can, including cutting the number of cameras in MLB games. If you watch an MLB game on Valley Sports, you may have noticed that there's not quite as many cameras out there covering the action. And that's because they're cutting back on the number of uh, cameras and costs as they look to try to lower their costs to deal with the fact that they're getting less revenue because fewer people are paying for RSNs nowadays. Let me know what you think. Have you actually used or watched Valley Sports recently? Have you seen any drop in quality in the performance of it? I love to, or the quality of the broadcast, I should say. Let me know. All right, core cutting in the United States has been leading other countries by a good amount. And this means other, other countries haven't quite felt the same pain that core cutting has brought to US companies like Comcast and Spectrum. But it's starting to happen. The BBC is starting to feel the pain as they are now at, um, are asking for more money to be uh, raised. Apparently, BBC is finally feeling the drop in core cutting out there with that. That means the royalties that they were getting paid before starting to go away as people are maybe spending money in other areas. Now, in Britain, it's a little different how the BBC works with all that. But increasingly, we're seeing this across the world that core cutting is maybe anywhere from three to five years behind where it is in the United States. But it's starting to come to that inflection point in a growing number of countries where people are saying, hey, I finally have streaming services here that I can enjoy content with. I don't need to do that. I'll pay a traditional broadcaster there. The other issue here is in the past, a lot of American broadcast companies licensed their content. Disney, Paramount, etc. would license their shows to broadcasters in other countries. Now instead, Disney's offering Disney Plus around the world, cutting out the middleman, hurting cable companies with this. Be interesting to see how this all plays out, but it's very clear that core cutting is no longer just a U.S. phenomenon and no longer really just hurting U.S. providers. It's kind of getting worldwide at this point. All right, um, deal of the day. Right now, for a limited time, you can get three months of Paramount Plus and Showtime's bundle for half off. Now, with this deal, you'll be able to take advantage of Paramount Plus and Showtime content for three months locked in before the price hike that's coming at the end of June. So keep that in mind. A great way if you've been thinking about trying Paramount Plus to get Paramount Plus commercial free and Showtime for half the price. A link in the show notes, details in the show notes down below of how to take advantage of that deal. And last story up of the day, Sling TV Free Stream, which now has over 370 live channels, added seven new channels today or yesterday from when I'm recording this. 
And these include a bunch of film rice contents, um, Mortar Vision TV, and Food52. Uh, Those are just a few of the networks that went live on Freestream. If you haven't tried out Sling TV's Freestream, it's available on a large number of devices, including Roku. Unfortunately, not the Fire TV yet. They say more devices coming soon. But it's a free streaming service. You don't have to be a member of Sling TV. You can just create an account and watch a ton of ad uh, free or ad supported free content. So check that out. If you haven't tested it, it's a great service. I highly recommend you check it out. So with that said, I hope you have a great Memorial Day. What are you planning to do for Memorial Day? Leave me a comment, let me know. I will see you on Tuesday. Have a great weekend, everybody. Take care, be safe. Thank you so much for your support.